Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we are doing a This Year in Perfume. And it's a sad This Year in Perfume because it's the last year of 19, or the last year in the 1980s decade, which is my favorite decade for fragrance. But alas, we have some amazing fragrances in the year 1989. Uh, so, before we get started, let's do the usual. Let's talk a little bit about what happened in 1989. Let's really set the mood, shall we? So, um, Japanese Emperor Hirohoto died in 1989. I believe Tiananmen Square happened in 1989, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there was a big earthquake that hit San Francisco. You've probably seen the uh, pictures and the videos from that, from the Golden Gate Bridge, so forth and so on. Uh, Exxon Valdez tanker, that was a terrible uh, environmental disaster. Um, U.S. troops invade Panama in, in 1989. The first liver transplant, how's that? Um, imagine, no one got a liver transplant before 1989. Um, so there you go, there's some quick facts, if you will. I know you guys aren't here for that. You're here for the fragrance. But before we do that, we're going to do some songs. Baby, I love your way. Um, every day. Yeah, yeah. I'm not singing it, but you get the idea. That was one of the, the top hits, if you will. Um, what else was a big hit in um, 1989? Let's see. Um... We've got Bust a Move by Young MC. Does anyone know that one? Because I, I don't. Uh, wait a minute, I do. That's right. Love Shack, the B-52s. Um, what else do we have here? I'm looking through the 100, top 100 songs on some of it, on some website I've never heard of, and I don't know a lot of these. Um, welcome to the Jungle. Okay, um, that'll end the song, top 10. And then the movies, we've got Rain Man. Um... Pet Cemetery, which by the way, the book is even better. If you can tell, if, if you can't tell, I'm a Stephen King fan, uh, especially his older books. They're just amazing. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade came out in uh, May of 89. Ghostbusters 2. Oh, Batman. How could you forget Batman? Um, I think that was the most uh, or the best grossing movie of, of 1989. Um, so, before we do the fragrances from 1989, let's do the normal trend, and let's do scent of the day. My scent of the day is a scent from L'Artisan Parfumeur, and this is called Zing. So, you got the girl riding the tiger. Um, very interesting presentation, if you will. This fragrance, um, I'll tell you what, as far as uh leather fragrances go this is a very interesting fragrance it was it was released in 1999 so a decade after our featured year and it's a olivier jacobetti release and the fragrance has leather ginger and saffron in the top saffron by the way i bought this oh if i would have thought in time i would have opened it but I bought this Kirkland Saffron that I really want to smell. Look at that. Look at that Saffron in there. Um, I don't think I've ever actually just smelled Saffron like this. It's going to take me a while to dig into this because the way it's packaged. But I will get this out and give it a good sniff. Um, so it's Leather, Ginger, and Saffron. The heart is Iris, Caramel, and Jonquil. I don't know what Jonquil is. J-O-N-Q-U-I-L. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. Cedar, Tonkin Musk, Costas, in Castorium. Okay. So, um, this fragrance, Zing, reminds me of a couple different fragrances. It gets a little bit animalic in the dry down. Not so much that it would put people off. Some people say it smells like a circus. Like it smells like those, um, remember those um, circus peanuts that you ate that were like orange and, um, you know, you you know what I'm talking about. Circus peanuts. Um, and, and, and I think that's what they're called. Circus peanuts. Work with me here. Um, but, um, this gives, some people say this gives off this circus type smell because it's like the, anim, it's like animalic, you know. 
you know, it smells like you're almost standing in the middle of a circus. And I can kind of see that. But what I get more is I kind of get like an updated take on like a modern take on a Russian leather. <laughs> so you know how if you go watch some of my old videos, I've talked about um, uh, Queer to Russie by Chanel having this very, um, you know, horse carriage wagon thing going on where even though it smells very elegant, it also smells like you're kind of in a horse carriage. This feels like they kind of took that Russian leather idea. It feels like um, there's birch in here. Even though there's none listed, you get this birch type feel. And the reason that it feels kind of updated is they did sweeten it a little, a little bit, which I normally don't like sweet fragrances, but here... It takes my favorite note, leather, and the sweetness isn't too much. It's not too modern. It's niche. It's kind of strange and out there, and I like that about this. Um, and it's currently March... What is today? March um, 5th. So, March 5th of 2022. So, I'm trying to wear it before it starts instantly being uh, 100 degrees every day in Texas, which it is prone to do. Um, so I'm trying to get some of these heavier wares in. So I decided to go for this one today and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it also smells like a niche version of, um, oh gosh, now I'm not going to be able to remember the name. Carolina Herrera, uh, CH Men, not Privé, just CH Men. Uh, that has this sweet sugar leather thing going on. This kind of is like a niche version of that, but this came before that scent. And sadly, this is discontinued, so I will cherish my little 50 ml vintage bottle. Okay, let's get to the fragrances from 1989, and we're going to start with a banger. And I have to start with this, and because I'm going for the jugular on this one. I heard a stream recently where Eugene and Galen were talking bad about this fragrance, and I almost fell out of my chair. I didn't comment on it, just like he said he kept his mouth shut about for weeks while he was wearing it. Um, it was a recommendation by famous YouTuber Duncan, apparently, to Eugene, and uh, he said he didn't like it. Well, I love this fragrance. This is Crezia Moods. Womo, and it is one of my favorite patchouli fragrances of all time. I'm a little scared to say it's my favorite patchouli fragrance of all time after the lashing they gave it on that stream, but I think it is. I think it might be my favorite patchouli. It's just this manly, you know, it takes this patchouli, it takes this patchouli idea, okay, and it throws it into a 1980s masculine um composition so so it it gives you old school carnation you know it's kind of peppery there's a beautiful rose that comes out there's old school lavender and coriander and cardamom and bergamot which i love and then there's also a base of leather and ambergris there's supposedly ambergris in here this is before the big ambroxan push so there probably is real ambergris in here but i don't know that for a fact uh and then there is this tonka bean and vanilla, but it never goes sweet. It's about the patchouli and the leather and the, you know, the masculine notes. Even though there's a floral heart, there's ginger, ginger to kind of keep it sprightly and fresh. It is just an amazing fragrance. And, um, you know, I don't know if I'm willing to die on this hill if everyone thinks I'm nuts, but I love this for a patchouli. And I've found that most of the fragrances from the house of Crizia are absolutely amazing. Teatro a la Scala, even Crazy Crizia EDP. Um, the one that I don't like as much as some other people is, is Crizia Womo. Um, but for me, Moods uh, Womo by Crizia is an absolute banger. Especially if you're a patchouli lover, you have to get your nose on this scent. I absolutely love it. So um, had to start with that one. All right, now we're going to go from one I love to one I not hate, but don't, it's not really my style. And if you watched my previous couple videos, um, it's been featured there on my, this is not a top 10 citrus video. And this is called Pour Monsieur EDT Concentre. So they, uh, obviously Pour Monsieur, the original came out in 1955. This is a flanker to that. And this came out in 1989. That gives you an idea of how things used to be in the old days. People used to take their time when they created these scents. 
Uh, it wasn't flanker after flanker after flanker, you know. Now they don't even wait a year and they're pumping out another flanker. So we're talking decades apart, half a century almost. Um, and it is a very nice fragrance. It's 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 not my favorite style. This citrus, you know, even though this is technically considered a chifra, it's just not my favorite. But I, I can appreciate it, on, especially on a very hot day. It's very comforting. You can just layer it on and you're not going to offend anybody. It's lavender, orange, petit grand, cardamom, nutmeg, oak moss, and there is real oak moss in the uh, concentre version, which is discontinued, the EDT concentre version. My bottle is either a 1995 or a 2005. I'm not 100% sure, but um, there's a Papanax, a vanilla, vetiver. So that's what they've added here. They added uh, vanil They added uh, a Papanax and vanilla to the mix to kind of make it a little bit more modern than, than the real old school EDT. So I like this more than the regular EDT, uh, but head to head with the more modern EDP, that would be a very close race. They did a really good job with the modern EDP. Um, but Poor Monsieur Concentre from 1989, this is a Jacques Polge. Speaking of Jacques Polge, there is one that I actually like wearing this a little bit more than Poor Monsieur EDT, and it's called Tiffany for Men. Okay, now Tiffany for Men is also a Jacques Polge, believe it or not. It almost looks like a belt buckle here on the side, like a masculine belt buckle. And um, I like wearing this a little bit more than uh, Poor Monsieur. You can see the idea was kind of in their head. This was popular amongst older gentlemen at the time. And so they kind of took it and they created something a little bit more modern with Tiffany for men. They added um, heavier notes like frankincense and amber and tonka. There's even a patchouli and rose here with um, nutmeg, cinnamon, sandalwood. There's anise, orris. It's a little bit powdery, but it kind of keeps that cologne, you know, fresh citrus DNA thing going, which I really like. Um... So very old school smelling in a modern way. That probably doesn't make any sense. Old school smelling, but in a modern way. But that's really the best way I can describe this scent. It is kind of a it is kind of a grail scent for people who like this DNA, if you will. But um, Tiffany for men, if you're big into discontinued fragrances like I am, even though this style isn't my favorite, you should own this. Amazing stuff. Um, okay, now we're going to go to one I'm not a big fan of. So we're knocking out the ones I'm not a big fan of. All the rest of them are pretty much home runs. This is Boucheron Pour Homme. And I do have the Inter Parfums version. I do think Inter Parfums does good reformulations. Um, but again, this is just not my favorite type of scent. It's very citrusy. Um, it was created by uh, Francis Delamont and Jean-Pierre Beef Out. I can't pronounce that guy's name. Sorry, Jean-Pierre. Uh, a thousand apologies. But this is uh, Basil. I'm going to do a This Is Not A Top 10 Basil Ben. Don't worry. And um, this will be on the list. Basil, bergamot, lavender, mandarin, orange, orange, vervain, lemon, Carnation, orris, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, elang, ambergris, benzoin, oak moss, moss, sandalwood, tonka, vetiver, frankincense. So a lot of notes, but basically you get this very citrusy, um, very classy. This is very classy and clean, you know, for the heat. You would wear these type of scents. In my opinion, these type of scents are absolutely perfect for the heat. Uh, these, this is like a summer triple threat right here if you're a fan of this type of scent. Um, they all came out in 1989. For me, they're all eh, but uh, they're good scents, obviously. I mean, Jax Polge made the first two we're talking about, and he's an absolute all-star. Uh, so, but Boucheron Pour Homme, if you if you love this DNA, this is probably one of your favorite scents of all time. Like, I know Mr. Smelly really likes this DNA, and you hear him talk about Boucheron Pour Homme all the time. For me, it's eh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good scent. It's just not my favorite, but it has to be given its respect. I would rather wear Jaipur EDT in the heat and EDP in the winter if I was forced to wear a Boucheron scent. 
Okay, now let's go to one I actually have a backup bottle of. And this is a proper unicorn. And I gave um, some first impressions to this house recently. Duncan um, sent me some samples. And uh, they were just absolutely amazing. And this, But this is the, bot, the one from the um, brand that I have full bottles of. It's called Jill Sanders Feeling Man. So that's what the bottle looks like. The bottom almost looks like it's got like elephant legs. Um, very cool bottle. One, The back of one of them says Feeling Man. And the back of the other one just says Man. I don't know if you can see that well, but um, this is a older bottle than this. This is actually a Lancaster bottle. Look at the difference in the color of the juice too. Um... So this is a distributed by Lancaster, who's popular for the Zeno bottles from Davidoff and stuff like that. And this is distributed by Jill Sanders Cosmetics. So this is an older bottle. Um, but um, I can tell you that this is one of my favorite, um, I don't want to say Dracar Noir style fragrances because it definitely has its own thing going on. And it is discontinued, whereas you can still buy Dracar Noir. But if you gave me a choice and you said, Ramsey, you can pick one to keep in your collection. Dracar Noir, which I have a vintage Cosmere of, or this, I would take this. Because this does the Dracar Noir DNA, but it adds so much more. It has tarragon and aniseed. It has raspberries and orris. So it's kind of fruity. It's kind of powdery. Um... And then the dry down with that, think about the Dracar Noir DNA, but add this beautiful tobacco, amazing masculine tobacco in the base of this. This is such a great fragrance. It was created by a guy I've never heard of, Elaine Alkenberger, and, but he created a bomb of a fragrance, and it's just a shame that this is discontinued. I'm so happy to have a bottle. I got this from Muda Seer off of Base Notes, and I... Highly recommend Mou de Cire. If you're into hard to find fragrances, give Mou de Cire. Look him up on Base Notes. Uh, he is 100% trustworthy. His reviews are actually shocking because they go back like 15 years or something and they're all just glowing and, and they should be. So Mou de Cire, thank you, mate. You deserve the shout out. Okay, we're going to go to two women's fragrances next. The first is a Guerlain. And if you know Guerlain history, you know what's coming up. And this is a fragrance called Samsara. This is the EDP. Uh, this is the vintage EDP. It's got five digit batch code in it. So I'm guessing because it's got the five digit batch code, this has real sandalwood, real Mysore sandalwood in it. But um, I'll tell you what, Duck, uh, Rich Mitch kind of threw me for a loop the other day because he mentioned that the real vintage EDP is clear bottled, not red. So I don't know which one's first, to be honest with you. I thought that this would be the earlier one, but apparently not. I, apparently, um, it's the clear bottle that's the first. But if anyone knows, let me know. Um, but this one has this cap that uh, it's backwards like this. So when you to clo it's closed right now. So to open it, you switch it to the front, and now it sprays. And then when you switch it back, it locks, so it actually won't spray. Um, I like this design, and I and I like the bottle, and um, it almost looks like a te like a temple or something, doesn't it? You know, like it's a like it's an artifact, like it's a vase or you know something something very special, and um, it is a very special fragrance because it's one of the best sandalwood fragrances of all time. They use peach, which they also used in Mitsuko way back when. Um, but it just brings in this beautiful, one of the most gorgeous contemplative sandalwood notes. Like it just puts you in this state of mind, this very calming, relaxed, you know, like you're just being given a massage and, uh, sitting in a comfy robe and it's just, it's very just, you know, woosah, just very contemplative and everyone take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay. You know, it's 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 an amazing fragrance. Um, the thing that puts me off sometimes is the jasmine in this. The jasmine in this is very, very powerful. And uh, it's like, sometimes it feels like it's a jasmine, ylang ylang, and sandalwood fragrance to me. Um, you know, those notes just pop. And sometimes that ylang and jasmine just like overrun things in my head. 
and it just hits me right here in the temple. But when you catch it on a good day, boy, it is just absolutely beautiful. And I will wear this. Um, don't um, don't think that this is just like a um, like a like an artifact for my collection. No, I actually will wear Samsara. In fact, I wore it a couple days before Hall Halloween this year. Beautiful scent memory attached to it with, you know, taking my daughter to the pumpkin patch and stuff like that. So um, it is a fragrance that I will absolutely wear. One of the women's fragrances in my collection. And I wear everything in my collection. Another women's fragrance in my collection. And I'm cheating a little bit because this one came out in the 40s. And it was created by Edmund Rudnitska. But it was reformulated by Olivier Cresp. Go check out my Olivier Cresp fragrance video if you're interested in seeing what other fragrances he did um but this this was reformulated by him in 1989 and it's called Rochas Femme one of the best chifra fragrances of all time I would say top three chifras of this style I would say Mitsuko this and Diaghilev and uh, Shifra Palatine right there in the top. Top five, you would have to add Shifra Palatine, and let me think of a fifth one. But, um, Rochas Femme, boy, as far as Shifras go, oh, it's so, so, so good. Um, you know, Diaghilev, by the way, I think Rudy and I agree on this point, but it feels like they took, you know, feels like some sort of a blend of Rochas Femme and uh, Mitsuko. And this is actually a vintage Parfum de Toilette version, which they stopped using the Parfum de Toilette verbiage a long time ago. So if you get a PDT, a Parfum de Toilette, you know it's an older bottle. And um, this is so good. The cumin just really jumps out in the beginning. It's one of my favorite uses of cumin. Um, right up there with Eau de Hermes. Eau de Hermes is my favorite use of cumin, but this is, um, this will really shock you. And, and value for money is through the roof. You can get this for like 30 bucks or something. Even the modern versions are good. But if you can find an older bottle, or better yet, if you can find the parfum, the pure parfum, it's so rich. Look at the color. I mean, it's so rich and decadent and fruity and, you know, it's got apricot, plum, peach, and then it's got rosewood, cinnamon. There's all the flowers you can think of. Jasmine, iris, carnation, rose, ylang ylang. There's a big dose of oak moss in the base. There's even leather and patchouli and vanilla and amber, musk, rosemary, clove. Um, and then, of course, the cumin in the opening. It kind of has that sweaty, that sweatiness. It's so good. That's what I love about Shifras. They're so sensual, you know. They're so And they're so complex. If you're a fan of complex perfumery, you know how you can find like a modern EDP version of Heritage or something for 40 bucks and it's like the most amazingly complex fragrance for the money? This is in that same category as far as complexity goes. This put uh, Olivier Cresp on the map. This in Essencia by uh, Loewe EDT. So check out my Olivier Crest video if you want to see more. But um, I'll be doing a full review on all these fragrances at some point. But this is just giving you an overview. Okay, now we're going to go to the um, House of Azaro. And this is one of my favorite masculine rose fragrances of all time. And a fragrance that I need to get a backup bottle of because this is all I have. And it's a little guy. It's a 25 ml bottle. And it's called Ace Tour. Ace Tour. Somebody tried to explain to me how to say this, and, and I have no clue, so I'm just going to keep saying Ace Tor. Um, but uh, Ace Tor, uh, Maurice Maureen is the perfumer, and this is an amazing rose fragrance. I love how it's so 1980s, um, but they managed to just implant this masculine rose from start to finish that just, it's so, so spicy and beautiful, and that rose just... You know, if you don't like rose fragrances, you have to give stuff like this and um, Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme a try. Those type of fragrances are just beautiful as a masculine rose. And Aramis 900, those three. This, uh, Aramis 900 and Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme are like the three, you know, trifecta of, of masculine fragrances, if you will. This has bergamot, calamus, cardamom, nutmeg, jasmine, caraway, rose, cedarwood, amber, oak moss, leather, and musk. 
it's so good, um, honestly, and, and it's a it's a 24-7, 365 cent. You can wear it anytime. It's backup bottle worthy. You can get these little 25 ml bottles for cheap too. I need to get a backup before, you know, all you guys go front run me and, and grab them all. But um, if you're a leather, if you're a, um, a rose lover, you have to check that one out. No one talks about that either. I've noticed that almost no one. I think I saw Fragrance Matt talk about that once in an old video, but other than that, it's almost like it doesn't exist, and I don't know why, because it's an amazing fragrance. Um, okay, now we're going to go to a cheapie, and I think this is still available, but I don't know who is the distributor, and I don't think I can see it here. Well, anyways, it's the purple juice. We're going to go, the next couple are crazy juice colors. Um, the first crazy juice color is Sung Om. Now, I got this tester bottle. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? I don't know. Who makes this thing? I can't see it. The purple juice is making it tough. Um, anyways, um, this uh, 10 bucks is what I got this literally $10 on the nose. They wanted 12. I offered them 10 and they said, here, take it. Uh, it's got this radioactive juice, but it actually is a clean smelling fragrance. If you like fragrances, like, um, if you like this clean freshness, like cool water or something, I wouldn't compare it to cool water, but it almost gives this very fresh vibe while also being an 80s fragrance. It has a ton of notes, but you wouldn't expect it if you smelled it. If you smelled it, a lot of people smell it, just says it just smells like a clean soap. You know, if you like Prada fragrances, there you go. There's a good example. If you like fragrances from Prada, like uh, Prada Amber Pour Homme, um, Prada Loam, those kind of fragrances, um, check out Alfred Sung Ohm. It's like the godfather of clean fragrances. The notes smell nothing like the fragrance. It's artemisia, basil, bergamot, caraway, pepper, sage, juniper berry, lemon, aldehydes, carnation, geranium, jasmine, caraway, stone pine needles, rose, oak moss, leather, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, fir, vetiver, and cedar. And um, it all comes together to give you basically Irish spring soap. Well, that's not fair. Um, but you get the idea. It's very clean, um, but it's different smelling from modern clean. So if you want to still smell clean, but, you know, something a little different, I'll wear this in the summer sometimes if you're just lounging around the house and you don't want to wear a niche fragrance like today, like I did. You can just plop this on, not even think about it, and you're not hitting your pocketbook at all because it is cheap as chips. Cheap as chips. Okay. From one crazy juice to another crazy juice, from the purple juice to the to the pink juice, and this is Yop Om. Now, you'll notice something about my bottle right away. It has this up here at the top, which is not on the modern bottles, and this is a Lancaster distributor. Okay, so Lancaster is the one that you want. It's I don't want to say it's a completely different fragrance because it's not. The modern one gets you there, but it does it in a much sweeter, less complex, less characteristic way. Um, the modern juice starts out ungodly sweet. This one's still a little tough for some people to take in the opening, but it feels so much deeper and denser and less sweet to me, to my nose. The modern Coty version is not a good reformulation. Um, and I actually really like this fragrance. This was a big hit in 1989. You know, pink juice for a men's fragrance? Who would have thunk it? You know, especially back then. It was very, very brave of a, of a release. And Parfumo shows Michel Almarac, but Pierre Bourdon also had a hand in this, apparently. Or Pierre Bourdon says he made it on one of his videos. So I don't know who made this, this juice. But... Um, if you look at the modern juice, the modern juice almost looks sickly pink sweet, like a bright radioactive pink. And this one, you can see, it's almost like this darker, you know, redder um, uh, pink color. And 
there there definitely are differences. It starts out um, to my nose. the The main notes are orange blossom, heliotrope, cinnamon, vanilla, tonka, sandalwood. There's also patchouli in the base, but it's not a patchouli fragrance. If you want a patchouli fragrance, get this. This is patchouli. Um, this just uses some facets of patchouli to maybe keep everything together. Uh, the heliotrope is, is amazing in this. It's kind of doughy. Um, you know, it almost feels like, um, it gives off the texture of dough, if that makes sense. Um, doesn't really go to the almond fa fa facet, though. Some heliotropes smell almond. This one doesn't. It does give off that Play-Doh feel, though, with cinnamon, bergamot, mandarin orange, lemon, and orange blossom. So the orange blossom is actually really amazing in this scent. Um, orange blossom, heliotrope, cinnamon, vanilla, and tonka. Amazing fragrance for the cold. Do not wear this in the heat of summer, though. You will be attacked. People will beat you with their... Uh, umbrellas if it's raining i guess if you're wait if you wear this what else could they beat you with a cane they could beat you with their cane if you wear this in the summer um not everyone walks around with sticks in texas though but they'll find something to beat you with it's brutal okay now we're gonna go on to one of the um the you know real sought after fragrances from the old days um it's a unicorn you know, it's 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 definitely a unicorn, although there's still bottles floating around out there. But it's a fragrance from the house of Van Cleef and Arpez, and this is called Sar. Now, Sar, I got this tester from Le Parfume, and I'll tell you what. So, if you're if you're a if you're a person who loves green scents, you have to get your nose on Sar. It is oak moss in a bottle. Uh, I think someone once told, said it was over 30% oak moss. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. My bottle, by the way, is copyright Adipar A-D-I-P-A-R, Adipar Limited. Not sure exactly who, um, who made this after this version, but you can see the um, ingredient list on my bottle is very short. And that's what you want. You want a short ingredient list because that means it's older. Uh, so this is alcohol, parfum, water. That's it. Uh, and the oak moss is really turned up. Believe it or not, I like wearing this fragrance in the summer. So call me crazy. I'll wear Van Cleef and Arpels Pour All and More in the winter. This I wear in the spring and summer because it just gives off this very very fresh very green um there's so many green notes there's artemisia coriander rosemary tarragon juniper and oak moss 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 they just dumped oak moss into here um with patchouli and vetiver which also can come across as rooty and green um damp um but then to top it all off, there's leather, there's pine, more green, um, pepper, carnation, old school carnation, which I love, jasmine, geranium. Uh, and then there's some citruses at the top like uh, bergamot. There's also narrowly, which is a very expensive note, lavender even. Such a great fragrance for a man. If you like traditional masculine scents, um, this is kind of a holy grail for me personally. I like wearing Van Cleef and Arpels Pour All more than this. This is almost like a second fiddle in the um, Van Cleef and Arpels line. But I do love this fragrance, just not as much as some. For some, this is like the ultimate holy grail, you know, best thing ever done. Definitely best thing by Van Cleef and Arpels. Not for me. I'll take Van Cleef and Arpels Pour All. That's more my style with the leather castorium rose, but this is still a great fragrance. 1989. This is right before the mood really started to shift in the 90s. Okay, now we're going to go to probably the best Montana fragrance. What am I saying? Probably, definitely the best Montana fragrance. And it also got some love recently in one of my videos. Um, Perfumer is Edouard Fleischier, and this is Montana Parfum Dome. And um, this fragrance is compared to Aramis um, Havana, which Aramis Havana has this um, tobacco 
uh, thing going on. This is almost like Aramis Havana, but they say there's no tobacco in this and the leather is kind of amped up. I really love this fragrance because, um, you know, it's so complex and it has that resinous frankincense, you know, almost like this LME frankincense thing going on in the base with a big dose of labdanum. I love labdanum, but there's also a lot of other things going on with it. There's pine, so it's a little bit green. It's a little bit floral. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit cinnamony, citrusy at the top. It's 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 amazing, and it's a shame this is discontinued. This was by far the best thing they ever put out. How about that bottle, like a Tower of Babel, just going up into the sky forever? Amazing creation. Um, I don't understand why houses discontinue fragrances like this. I really just don't get it. I guess it just didn't sell and they pulled the trigger, but um, I think they should treat these fragrances like Guerlain treats Le Bleu and Chalamar and keep them alive for posterity because there's a whole generation of people out there like me. I'm 36, um, almost 37, but um, you know, I at four years old, there's not, there's, there's, there's a whole group of people like me who weren't old enough to buy this in 89 and wear it that would totally wear this today. I mean, people like me and Rich Mitch and the subscribers on my channel, uh, if, if some of them are, are close to my age or younger, which I do get younger folks that write me all the time. A 25-year-old wrote me a couple days back. Um, they're interested in this stuff because modern fragrance is boring. And, you know, if, if these brands kept these fragrances alive, I think it would be better for their image and better for the fragrance community in general, but alas, I, di I divert and go off course. Okay, now we're going to go to the final fragrance in the list of 1989, and by the way, if there's some on here that, um, if there's fragrances from 89 you guys have and own that are not on this list, do please let me know, but um, this final one is, is one of um, one of the best, most recent leather finds that, I, that I've come across, obviously I've known about Queer de Russi and I've known about Antaeus and Bellamy and all that good stuff forever. You know, those are loves of mine going back many, many years. I discovered this fragrance last year and it's probably the best, most recent leather discovery that I've found that just completely blew me away. Um... I, I, the only, so you guys have heard me talk this way about a couple other fragrances like Teatro Alla Scala. You've heard me talk this way about fragrances like Venezia by Creed. There are people who have bought those fragrances on my recommendation and reported back and said, yes, they are absolutely amazing. You can hear some of them in the comments. Go back and read some comments from the old videos and stuff like that. This is one I also said is amazing, but maybe I didn't emphasize it enough. This is literally one of the best leathers in my collection. Again, I get nothing for this. All of these were purchased with my own money. These are not sponsored in any case, way, or form. In fact, this fragrance is actually discontinued in this version. You can still buy the modern stuff, but I've never smelled it and I can't vouch for it. But this one I can definitely vouch for. It's the Vintage EDC Eau de Cologne version of Etro Goma. My God, this fragrance, <sighs> this is backup bottle worthy. Problem is you can't find it in the EDC, the vintage EDC. In fact, I bought a leather fragrance from Creed called Royal English Leather that came out in 1776. Just kidding. Uh, but no, that's seriously when they say it came out or in the 1700s or something. If you go read this script, it's still there. They haven't taken it down yet. God bless their soul. Um... But um, this, this came out in 89, and this is what I expected Royal English Leather to smell like. Uh, but it doesn't. Royal English Leather is much brighter in the Creed fashion sense, if you will. This, this is absolutely amazing leather, and it, and, it, and it does the leather in the way that I like leather. They use a lot of birch, okay? Um, and it feels like they use castorium, although no castorium is listed. I get some castorium, um, vanilla, vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, clove. Uh, there's also some florals in here like ylang ylang, jasmine, and rose. And then the top, 
you get bergamot, lemon, tarragon, caraway, artemisia, and lavender. Those notes don't really describe what I get. To me, I get this, um, I get this uh, very rich, deep, dense leather that's a slightly oily, um, slightly smoky even. But the leather is just one of the most amazing leathers I've ever smelled. Completely blew me away. Before I even started this channel, I asked Rich Mitch. I, I was raving to him about this in a WhatsApp message that he needs to find Etrogoma. He couldn't find it, so he bought the amber one, which he said he loves. I need to get that one, and he needs to get this one. Uh, this is actually one of the best leathers in my collection. I would put it right up there with some of my favorite leathers, uh, Bandy by Robert P. Gay, um, Azure by Estee Lauder, the vintage, you know, just right up there with Antaeus and all my other favorite leathers. Bellamy is still my favorite leather, but God, this is, this is close to Bellamy status for me. It's that good. I enjoy wearing it that much. Leonard Porhomme, you know, those are my top leathers, if you will. Van Cleef and Arpels Porhomme, stuff like that. And this is right there and nobody talks about it. Nobody. Uh, and again, I get nothing for talking about it other than that I have this passion and I want to talk about it. Um, but um, it, this is an amazing creation, and it's also an Edward Fleischer creation. Um, so somehow this has flown under the radar. I don't know how. Um, actually, there is a $500 leather fragrance I bought called Zerjoff Alm. It's the only Zerjoff leather that I own. It's the only Zerjoff that I own a bottle of, period. And uh, this is better. This is better, hands down. And this is a fifth of the price, if not less. So, um, I don't know if I can make that case any stronger. If you're a vintage hunter like me, put this on your unicorn list. If you find a bottle of the vintage EDC, Eau de Cologne, not the EDT, but the EDC, grab it. Don't even think about it. Just grab it. Grab it, report back, let me know what you think. Um, so that's my 1989 list. If you have any recommendations, suggestions, thoughts on these fragrances, I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love all of the support that I get from you guys. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I have the best first 600 subs that a, you know, aspiring YouTuber could ask for. I wouldn't even call myself a YouTuber. I'm just a guy who has a fragrance passion and turn on a camera on a phone and talk about it. So I really appreciate you watching this video uh, and I appreciate you commenting. I'll never ask for a, a like, but uh, if you're bored enough and you see the like button there and you hit it, apparently it helps, but um, you know, whatever. I'm not gonna be like, like and subscribe. That's not my deal, but uh, I do. A like is always appreciated. How about that? I took that from Rich Mitch, and I like the way he says that because that is, uh, that's is—that's exactly how I feel. I hate it when the first thing that comes out of people's mouths are like and subscribe. And, you know, it's like they have some sort of twitch they have to say every time. If you haven't subscribed to the video, click the video below. Like, come on, man. If I like your content, I will subscribe. Trust me. Um, so anyways, thanks a lot. Cheers. I'll see you again tomorrow with another fragrance video. Bye-bye.